Good, uh, good afternoon, good morning. Uh, welcome to our next uh, episode on building blocks uh, for tax. Uh, my name is Dave Fabrex. I'm CEO of uh, TPA Global. I'm honored to have uh, Mary and Jordan of uh, Pfizer Software Technologies uh, with me. Um, we, we're going to run an interesting show on how tax authorities deal with your tax data behind the digital mailbox. That's in short what we're looking at, but we also will be looking at what's happening in front of the mailbox and how those two worlds uh, are two worlds apart or whether in, in more and more terms, um, as, as I saw a message uh, on my LinkedIn from uh, the Brazilian tax authorities, it becomes a collaborative or corporative even uh, compliance exercise between taxpayers and tax authorities. Um, with that, let's move to the first slide. So, uh, a little bit about the philosophy we're going to talk about. Uh, the, how you need, if you do digital processes like this, you need to inspire people, define very accurately your process, and then uh, really look at technology as a facilitator and not the other way around. We will look a little bit together with the tax authorities on a recent publication into the future of 2030, how tax authorities uh, in their tax administration 3.0 are looking at the world. Um, a car wash principle we will explain to, uh, to get data disconnected from applications, but cleaned up for uh, that dig the same digital mailbox. Then we have uh, uh, for, uh, topic four and five are connected uh, with TPG. Uh, Maria will, uh, sorry, Maria, I was forgetting you. Uh, Maria of TPA will uh, showcase us uh, TPG, uh, how TPG deals with CBCR and, and how it works it into an XML file to be ready for the digital mailbox. Um, Jordan uh, of, of Visor will show us the same case, but then from the back end of, of the digital mailbox. Um, we do have a few polls in the, in the uh, slides, so please uh, uh, participate um, when we uh, introduce them. Uh, so we get some interaction and some uh, feedback from you guys as well. There is a chat functionality for people who want to raise questions on the fly and uh, Rosanna is uh, taking care that those questions get to uh, either, either of the four speakers today. With that, uh, let's open the next slide. Next slide, please. So if we want to inspire people, it would be good to look into the future a little bit and say, okay, what, what knowledge level do you need and what what are the titles today and what are the titles into the future so we we're having a lot of discussions with corporates but also with tax authorities uh, whether they have that technology professionals or tax data and tech controllers uh, even data trash engineers um, but also as you see more into the future and, and more on an uh, above average level of uh, knowledge, the tax litigation automation analyst, which will pre-select uh, court cases, but also tries to assess the probability of a win based on the facts at hand. So these are just looking into the people um, uh, profiles and, and basically show you a totally different view from the, the titles as we know them today. Okay. If we go to the next slide, um, that's a poll. So does any one of you have a data specialist uh, in, in the, on, on the payroll with, or a specialist, data specialist, with whom you're working to deal with uh, tax, uh, tax compliance or tax planning exercises? So not very surprisingly, I think majority says we, we do have one or more data specialists in place. So I think that's uh, probably also the uh, reason you're, you're on a conference like this uh, with another uh, quarter planning it. And uh, um, well, surprisingly, a quarter is still 
not having plans to to put data uh, architecture and data management around the tax compliance uh, in, in terms of high priority. Um, Mary or Jordan or Maria, any, any thoughts on that? Hi, Steve. This is Mary here. Um, good morning and good afternoon, good, good evening to all of the people who are listening in and wherever you are. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess we can only speak um, from the perspective of our clients. And as I'll delve into a little bit later on, our clients are tax authorities. So we'll be talking from the viewpoint of government. I am, and we even serve wider than that. We, we, we serve a lot of central banks and financial regulators as well. And we have definitely seen an increasing trend towards data specialists. I am, but of course, the issue then becomes they're a highly sought after um, profession. So really to try and either get this talent or you can, of course, try and build this talent from the inside out as well. And it's a challenge often for a lot of the clients that we serve. But yes, there definitely is a trend to have more data specialists in place if they can. Okay, Mary, uh, very uh, thanks for your comments. Yeah, I think uh, that that is a uh, reflection of the tax authority side. Uh, we we seen most of the recruitment advertisements uh, by the Ministry of Finance in the Netherlands do to address the data specialist side of the re recruitment candidate uh, for sure. Uh, that that was different two years ago. So that that uh, focus is really changing. Um, noticeably, and uh, but still surprised that a quarter of the participants says we don't have any plans yet um, uh, at the moment. Okay, let's move on. So what we defined about uh, uh, two years ago is is four generations of technology, and now let me explain what I mean with generations. The first generation is the um, the one trick pony so they they run a software they're not necessarily connected uh, to anything else so you still need to use your old classic uh, uh, excel spreadsheets to upload uh, your data into the system in, into those software packages and then they do a trick they do an application they generate a, a form or a report or they even do an xml conversion but it's pretty standalone so it's it's uh, yeah it's the first baby step into digital transformation um, the second generation is is where uh, people start um, uh, boosting the the tax engine in an ERP system like Oracle and and, and SAP uh, by doing that they get sort of an enhanced uh, um, tax uh, compliance and tax planning tool uh, very close to the data. The, the trouble with that sometimes is that not everyone has the relevant access to the SAP, uh, sorry, ERP environment like SAP, uh, but also that the flexibility uh, to run, especially on planning uh, cycles, such uh, if-then scenarios is not always there in the ERP systems. Plus, not all tax relevant data might necessarily have already be on the inside. Um, third generation is basically doing the same as the second. It tries to visualize 100 in house workflows and says, okay, in five years' time, 80 of those will be automated, but let's not uh, try to change the, the nature of the beast by changing the ERP system around to our needs, but let's just pull a string of data out of the ERP system, feed it to an, uh, to an application, one application per tax workflow, and, and assume that application is in the cloud, downloadable, and can be, um, can be obtained at a fairly low price. So let's assume you, you can download from the App Store a CBCR application, and it does exactly if you if you feed it with the relevant data, it does exactly that. What uh, we we will be showing you today, then uh, automating uh, 80 of your 100 in-house tax workflows might be 
relatively affordable. It's baby steps, so you're not overselling um, your internal process. At the same time, it, it remains an affordable uh, approach without at that point in time necessarily have to change your whole data architecture and data management. That brings us to the fourth generation. There you really start uh, uh, feeding um, your originally dirty data from your EOP, from your HR, from the outside. You need to clean and, 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 and put it in the right format. Um, you need to uh, put it at this stage still into a form. The form is, uh, is being filed uh, typically by extracting all the data in the form, uh, create an XML of that, and that goes through the digital mailbox of the tax authorities. So this, this is what we call in today's world an end-to-end -end solution. Uh, it allows this XML conversion. It is fitted for the digital mailbox, although you can still file, uh, for example, CBC, uh, CBCR, country by country reporting in Belgium. You can still attach the relevant file and send an email to the tax authorities and they will acknowledge received, um, which is different from other uh, governments where that email functionality doesn't exist anymore. The use of connectors and APIs, even between taxpayers and tax authorities, is a key element, but certainly also uh, the use of connectors where all the dirty data comes from to your clean, to be cleaned file, uh, uh, to be ready for the digital mailbox. Uh, so it's, it's, a, uh, it's a, what we call Lego for tax, so you create building blocks and each block on top of two other blocks is, is called a connector to visualize it uh, in, a, in a simple way. The more connectors you have, the easier it is to eliminate the human intervention and only, um, and only apply it uh, on, a, on an if and insofar needed base. So having said this, uh, if we move to the next slide, uh, this uh, and this is a white paper we recently published. Uh, it's on the TPA website, uh, but also on my LinkedIn. Uh, we we also looked in the, into the future of tax in 2025 uh, to some organizational models. Traditionally, in-house tax is tax is is doing compliance and planning. Um, that that was the old uh, old school way of thinking. In today's in-house tax organization. The compliance and planning groups are complemented uh, with finance, IT, and data trained professionals, as we just learned from the poll as well, uh, where there is um, yeah, a lot of dual roles. So finance people will, will be involved in tax compliance processes and, and uh, converting dirty data to clean data for tax purposes, uh, but also um, VAT uh, professionals who are already data strong and data savvy uh, are used to um, to configure uh, country by country reporting and are accountable for making that process work. So that's that's a little bit how I see today's world, where where there's obviously some outliers who are really uh, ahead of this curve, and then you get sort of in in the tomorrow's. Uh, for most companies, that is, in tomorrow's in-house tax organization, the, the head of tax will be a relationship management role for whatever the clientele is. Uh, there will be an adequate planning professional, but that will be supporting the business on a real-time pre-transactional base. There will be data analytical role, which filters the data and the outliers, but also addresses uh, when those outliers are really relevant for tax. So basically a corporate income tax and a VAT specialist will not even touch a case unless the data analyst has said it's, it's, it's material and it's relevant for tax. Uh, so th this is really another way of organizing your whole uh, compliance flow uh, by looking at outliers from a data analytical perspective. Then if you have the, the standardized data where ERP specialists uh, who are involved in, in this dirty data to clean data cycle, 
uh, will have to share this data with different uh, stakeholders, uh, such as the tax authorities. Plus, there will be a, a, what, what some people call a taxologist, a senior digital tax offers, officer, which pulls all of these workflows together. So this is uh, just a far-fetched to look into the future, but as I said already, some uh, companies will raise their hands and say, if you're already outdated, because this is what we do today. A few, but certainly they are out there. Um, if there's any questions, please feel free to jump in and also raise your questions through the chat functionality. We move quickly to the next slide. A quick view into the tax administration. So as we said, uh, forms driven, manual, slow, costly. This is the tax authorities, how they work. They, they do retrospective risk treatment and they have disconnected ecosystems. So they want to go, this is the future 2030, uh, published in 2020, this, uh, this OECD paper. Uh, they want to go to data-driven, event-based, um, uh, validation of assured data with uh, connected ecosystems, which also allows international cooperation. Well, you heard Mary say we, we're, we are exchanging information also between tax authorities, so that's, that's also part of their proposition. If we move to the next slide, this is the uh, digital transformation process the tax authorities are faced with. So this is a simple value chain of what they do. Um, if, for example, uh, you get into a communication with the tax authorities, that could be taxpayer services, uh, you could be talking to a bot functionality. That's a digital transformation of that taxpayer services. Or you can register yourself through going into an app, downloading an app and registering yourself as a taxpayer. That could be a digital transformation uh, by the tax authorities. All the way to digital dispute handling, which uh, certainly in, in places like Australia and China already, for simple cases, dispute resolution is already partially digitalized. If we look at uh, the next slide, you sort of see the tip of the iceberg, uh, you, you get personal devices. Uh, th this is what you see as a citizen, personal devices, business management si systems all running on the Internet of Things and, and, and in the cloud apps uh, at your disposal. What you don't see and what will, what is happening in, in the, in, uh, under underwater is, is pretty familiar to most of you. So tax authorities tend to already get a lot of data from banks, from welfare, welfare, from retail, from international agencies to fill your tax return and then hand it over to you and say, please sign here if you believe there's a delta, uh, tell us. Now, so this, this is sort of the uh, more functional view of what's happening. And if we take the next slide, then we see um, how Singapore already has uh, created an open source development environment where um, the corporates can use the API. The API is a connector to transfer data from one uh, organization to another. Uh, corporates can already uh, install uh, that connector with the tax authorities through this My Info Data Vault. Uh, the, 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 uh, the vault in the middle with the key next to it, uh, the uh, corporates can collect the data. They can uh, share that data through push of the button, say uh, your payroll uh, uh, information. You can push, uh, because the app is installed as a taxpayer, you can push and thereby forward the data to the tax authorities who takes care of the rest. So the philosophy of the Singapore tax authorities is that no service is the best service, which took me a while to understand that, but basically they, they eat your data through a, a connector like this and they take care of all the rest. So they take it out of your hands. Uh, this is uh, maybe an extreme case, but it does work and it, it's, it is running. So it's not, um, future, it's today. So if we then 
turn a little bit into the future view of uh, a wider group of tax authorities to the next slide. Then we basically see uh, three uh, views of the future. So this is Mary's experience uh, from the uh, tax administration 3.0. Mary is using a My365 platform and an app to interact with tax authorities and any governments. So this is while that this is widely ex explained and in detail what what will then be events. Uh, Mary uh, will will start using uh, this app to uh, say, okay, I'm married, uh, I, I will move houses. And so all, all events are being captured through the same line of communication. That means you only have to give your information up once. We go to the next slide. Very much similar, sole uh, self-employed entrepreneur. Uh, Kim is, is uh, automatically through her business solution my business platform is uh, sharing the information with the tax authorities similar to what we just showcased in uh, in, uh, in singapore and and as a consequence there's it eases uh, uh, kim's life on on tax compliance and kim can really focus on her business if we go to the next slide same applies to corporates in this case uh, the multinational is called smart falcon and smart falcon uh, operates uh, through a uh, either a platform directly with the tax authorities or with a, a group of um, designated agents uh, as, as we uh, we produced uh, two weeks ago a webinar on eclear eclear is an a fat agent for corporates to take over a lot of the compliance and then take care of that compliance vis-a-vis -vis the tax authorities. Uh, so it would not necessarily always mean corporates are directly interacting with the tax authorities, but there will be aggregators who have that license to operate on behalf of the tax authorities, and they will then comply with your compliance needs um, right away, all digital. So. With this, I think we're at the end of this section. If we move to the next. So car wash is uh, the, the dirty data to clean data. So we already looked at uh, the, this, this process before. You structure the data, you push the data into forms. The, the pushing into forms, we believe in the next five years will be eliminated. So you will be only pushing data fields to the tax authorities in XML. Uh, converted format, and this example is a country-specific XML uh, and digital mailbox to be full compliant, and the signal you get back from the tax authorities indicates the data points were clean and complete and accurate enough for them to accept it. If we go to the next slide, it, it sort of highlights the main challenge. The main challenge is on the right side, the green you have the single source of data. Um, so again, the dirty data gets to the digital mailbox. Uh, always, and that's called the single source of data. So the, the data runs through a process and there's various applications which clean the data, make it ready for the mailbox. On the left side, there is uh, what I call a single source of information. So you need uh, that different dashboards which uh, feed into different types of people. So you have a, a universal mobile compliance tracker, the CT you see on the, on the blue shaded area. Uh, it talks directly with your work spot environment, your Office 365, for example, and it feeds actionable insight. What is my not, not next task uh, after I completed this one? to local finance and local tax compliance uh, uh, compliant people. Um, and then on the other side, we add a Power BI, which again talks to your work spot um, environment, but also is feeding 
what is the status of the dirty data to the digital mailbox. Uh, so it gives you status insight typically to the lead tax compliance team, the audit committee and the C-suite, who's only interested in a piece of the action and not each individual task. So this type of configuration, I think a lot of companies have gone through. Uh, if not, then it's time to at least start thinking about it, especially given the speed at which the other side of the mailbox is, is moving. Uh, we're going to do a five, 10 minutes quick introduction on, uh, on TP Genie and then move to Visor. So I would like to hand over to Maria. So uh, some of our attendees might have seen TP Genie system before, but for those who didn't, uh, TP Genie is a TP documentation software that is web-based, so as you can see, I just access it from my Chrome browser. Uh, and it has capabilities of uh, preparing, helping you to prepare your uh, local file, master file, and country-by-country -country reporting. And we'll focus on country-by-country -country as uh, we discussed. So country-by-country uh, -country reporting works on a simple Excel file upload. So you just upload uh, the data for your tables one and two and the system uh, allocates it uh, to the correct places. So uh, you can see your table one uh, here, for example, and you can always still break down back to the entity level if you uploaded the data on the entity level. Uh, as in terms of table two, it shows the activities that OECD prescribes to allocate to the entities. Uh, and you can filter, of course, by your entity name. You can see uh, which entity signs both in exact activities, and you can also filter by country. And as for table three, uh, you can either create it uh, yourself by also uploading an Excel file, or you can add comments right away here. So for each field, you can add a comment, and it goes directly to your table three. Uh, you can also review in TPG the ratio analysis. So these are all the ratios that, again, OECD in its uh, risk assessment uh, book prescribes. Uh, so, for example, we want to see profit per employee. So we can see it per country. We can also see uh, what is the uh, group profit per, per employee. So you can see immediately your outlier. You can also compare it with the uh, previous financial year, if it was different or not. Again, you can filter, of course, by activity and by country, and you can get this data out uh, in the graph or in Excel file. Uh, what the system also does, it, uh, of course, has all the relevant XML templates available to convert to, and it checks against this XML template. So if something is missing, it flags out with the red flag saying that this information is needed in order for the uh, XML file to be correct and to be accepted by the tax authority. Uh, and if uh, you want to change it, you just click on the issue and it suggests you where you need to change something in order to be compliant with your XML template. Uh, once you corrected uh, those issues and once you're happy with everything, you can uh, download your file uh, in the uh, XML format and send it to tax authorities. Thanks very much, uh, Maria. Uh, is there any questions on, on this? This is sort of showing the, how the corporates take dirty data, feed table one, two, and three into uh, uh, country by country using a software tool like TP Genie, which is relatively standalone but very efficiently uh, produces your your TP documentation, uh, whether it's master file, local file, or CBCR. Um, I think with that we could, I think, start looking at uh, inviting uh, Mary and Jordan to first get to know. Pfizer a little bit and then go into, oh, we have a poll first, sorry. Um, how do you convert your CBC, CBCR into an XML now? What uh, What is your answer to that? And then we quickly move to, okay, the, the external consultants uh, win, still win this game. I'm not sure how long. 
uh, I, I would uh, say that external and uh, in-house uh, solutions together maybe just are uh, in a 50-50 battle with the external consultants. So I think if you look at this picture uh, um, six, 12 months ahead, then I think the balance will tip to external and in-house IT solutions. Um, I'd like to give the floor to Mary. Okay, thanks, Steve. Okay, so um, uh, for those of you here this afternoon, I had a quick look at the participant list earlier and, and I recognize quite a lot of names there. And for those of you who I haven't yet met, my name is Mary O'Leary and I'm the Tax and Technology Lead here at Pfizer. My title had been AEOI lead, something like that. But since I arrived at Pfizer three and a half years ago now, the scope of what we do for tax has greatly expanded. So originally we had a platform simply for doing CRS and FACTA. But of course, as we know, those international tax information exchange obligations are increasing every year. Um, so I think Maria's presentation was quite nice earlier on TPG, and that will feed very well into what Jordan and I are going to show you a little bit about today, which is when that CPC file is sent to the tax authority, what happens at that side? Because that essentially is what Pfizer caters to. So as you can see, I have my colleague Jordan, he's our AEOI product manager, and he will be showing a little bit more about the technicalities behind the solution. Slide, please. Okay, so. As mentioned, we're the global leader. So for external third-party providers, Pfizer right. supplies a so yeah, so Pfizer is the global global leader in solutions for AEOI. But as as mentioned earlier, our platform has really expanded um, in the last year or so. First of all, to accommodate a lot more and um, tax um, compliance obligations and also in terms of what governments are now looking to do with the data as well. Slide, please. Yes, so this just gives you a picture of who Visor is outside of the tax world. So we also provide solutions for financial regulators, and 30 in total globally, and also more recently for FIs. So we offer solutions for FIs on the regulation side and so far in Singapore. And it's also something we're exploring in Australia as well. In those two jurisdictions, Singapore, we serve the Monetary Authority of Singapore and known as MASS. And in Australia, we serve APRA, which is the Prudential Regulator. Yes, and this just gives you an idea of the landscape of our clients on the tax side. You can see if you work sort of across from left to right, I am, we have a lot of clients in the Caribbean and Central South America region. Then you move over, in, we also have clients that in Europe, we have Monaco and Gibraltar, in Africa, and we have quite a lot of clients also in the Middle East. So five out of the six GCC and the tax authorities are our customers here. Okay, so basically what Visor has evolved into, I mean, from our privileged position of serving across government, so not just tax authorities, but also central banks, insurance regulators, financial regulators, we have gained an awful lot of experience and insight into the trajectory of how all of this sort of compliance is going. Um, we see increased convergence and a lot of countries that we work in, we see the regulators working closer and closer together um, in order to, first of all, make this whole process more efficient from their perspective, but also course to try and ease the compliance burden for the entities in their jurisdiction as well. So even though essentially what we do is we supply software, we like to think that we actually supply a lot more. We have service expertise and our customer success and we have managed to build up quite a, a nice community around all of this and we hold many workshops in that regard for people of all sorts of specialisms 
from the governments we serve come together and we discuss ideas for the future, in particular in terms of data. So it says up there, our vision is a seamless AUI for global tax transparency. And I think the word seamless is key there. I think it's something Steve also mentioned and alluded to earlier. And I think that's the position that most tax authorities are working towards. Slide, please. So here you can see this is just a visual of our platform. You see the gray box in the middle is our platform with the front facing part, which is the portal, where if I am an FI or I am an ME for CPC, for example, I access and our solution through the portal. That's where I register, that's where I upload files. The supervision center is then the back end. I am at the tax authority where the tax authority will oversee everything and sends that data either via IDS if it's to go to the United States for FACTA or generally via the CTS and for the vast majority of OECD requirements. You see on top of all of this, we have an AUI analytics module. As mentioned, the tax authorities we serve have become a lot more demanding in terms of what they wish to see and be able to do with the data. So this is something we've specifically developed in order to meet that requirement. And finally, at the bottom, you see API connectors, because of course the data that is collected in our solution, it needs to be shared downstream for data matching, et cetera. So a lot of a lot of the times the solution is connected to downstream solutions and the data is shared via API. Okay, slide. Yeah, so that gives you just a very short um, overview of who we are. So I'm going to pass over now to Jordan, our AUI product owner, who's going to give a quick demo just of a snapshot of our CBC. Um, product and we'll have a look at how CBC then works from the government's perspective. Thanks, Jordan. Thank you, Mary. So uh, nice to be here and talk to everybody. As uh, Steve has uh, presented earlier on the and the TPG solution, uh, we'd like to obviously present uh, what Visor offers in the context of compliance. Uh, for a corporate taxpayer uh, and really answer that question of can we uh, map a data set uh, which the tax authorities used in those solutions. So what Visor is um, exploring is the concept of providing a data management template for any and all of the collections, whether it be CBC or CRS or any of the collections that you have seen on the previous slide as Mary presented uh, for economic substance or even furthermore MDR or DAC6 and have a global data set which can be mapped to by these either ta uh, compliance solutions or the corporate taxpayer uh, if it is uh, an out outsourced uh, solution that you use. And really what Visor is providing here is the context around the data models uh, in an easily consumable format. So we have our Excel here with the schema in this instance being CBC only, but this can branch out to all the ones as I mentioned before. And then the associated breakdown within those uh, at a high level for the, for the starting point are the elements. So you'll see all of the items as they are presented within the CBC uh, filings and all of the contextual information that is provided for each of those items. So you'll see all of the uh, attributes here and item properties that are required or expected in each case when the uh, items are mapped to in the source solution. So really what we're enabling here is just full transparency on the data model uh, and data set that is used in the background and eventually build this up to be a, a more granular and easy to use data model that can be used to report on any future uh, reporting obligations, as Mary has mentioned, are becoming quite more expansive uh, with the new publications by the OECD that keep coming out year on year. You can only see this data getting more granular and uh, really to be able to create a global tax model out of all of these collections that are out to date with the presumption that we could reuse that data that's defined in the model and make it more granular and use it for each report where data points are overlapping in some cases. 
So we see here, we have all of the items. We can also map to uh, the specific data type for uh, these items. So this gives you a definition of what is expected when you map to this data type. So again, this can be applied through all of the data models at a standard level across the board. And you'll be able to see what is defined as the uh, enumeration, the date type, the string type, and really all of that kind of data modeling perspective that uh, you have to do in the day-to-day -day for each collection now would be universal. And really, again, you get a full breakdown of what is uh, the accepted values, what are the expected values, the properties uh, for each of these as you go through the list. And in the case whereby there's even a, more of a breakdown when it comes to items such as enumerations, uh, you can, again, go in and see all of the associated broken down values keys and labels that are expected or uh, available to use within the filing. So this is building up building up a data definition, essentially, of all of the uh, current filings that are in play and being reported on by financial institutions and MEs. I'm really giving you a full context and breakdown of what, what is available to you. And then Outside of that, then, where, where there are outlier analysis being performed on the solutions, those will be the business or business rules and validations that occur. And really, uh, they are defined uh, quite uniquely here in uh, a specific ID, uh, the contextual and display text around it, what type of failure messages they are, whether they're errors or warnings, whether they uh, have any additional failure messages and the actual solutions to fix those validations. So this is a full data def definition of CDC in this one particular context. This can obviously be again applied across the board to CRS and much like the associated solution that you've seen in TP Genie, you would have a full, uh, a full model with all of the associated forms following the rules for the data that you're entering and be able to perform uh, or be able to submit all of these filings to a solution and hopefully be, be right first time. But that requires you to have the capability to do validation prior to that fact. And what Visor is offering uh, to also our uh, tax authorities uh, until uh, such time as they take it up though, uh, is a reporting API solution. So as Mary pointed out, we have our API connectors, but we're also um, making those APIs available to our tax authority, uh, uh, tax authorities, as well as uh, compliance solutions today. So I'm going to just briefly show you those endpoints and you know the responses that you can receive within your compliance solution to date in order to make sure that you get your filing right first time. So navigating here to our uh, API service. So we have just two endpoints that I'd like to show you today. So we have our validate API. So really what you're doing here is calling our API to validate that the data that you provided to us in that standard model is correct and will pass all of the validations before you've even got to the tax authority solution to upload your XML. So really it's doing all of that pre-validations as per the validations that are performed by the tax authority. So it's, it's exactly the same expression and rules engine that is used in both our tax authority solution that is used here and even adds the uh, the mailbox, as Steve calls it, those validations that are, occur on the other side of the solution. So really it, it helps you get that data right first time to stop any uh, corrected filings being required in the future, hopefully. And then obviously uh, outside of that, when you have that universal model defined, when you provide that data to our solution, we need the ability to give you back a usable file for when you do get to your tax authority. So when you define the collection that you're going to be submitting uh, to your um, tax authority, so whether it's CRS or CBC or economic substance, you define that here and we'd output to you that XML that is uh, completely compliant, even at, it passes validation again, and you can bring that to your tax authority in order to get that uh, filing true and right first time. So they're just the two endpoints that we offer in the reporting API. This is obviously for corporate taxpayers or compliance solutions to call at any point in time, uh, and we can make that available to you. So to have a look quickly at just some of the responses, I've uh, done a, a call previously on a, on a report that we have. And really what you get back is the name, the type of validation, the validation message, the expression, 
the value of that, those expressions. So all of the associated values that have been provided in the data model that we talked about previously will be shown here. What members there are, so it gives you the location on the Excel or XML file that has been provided and tells you exactly where all of those validations have occurred and really gives you an overview of that data and how it's been validated today and where you may need to make your corrections in order to make it a viable filing for when you get to the tax authority. So again, this is with the view that there's going to be more and more tax obligations or tax filing obligations pushed to the corporate taxpayer. And this is a scalable solution whereby we can incorporate all of those new solutions with the standardized data model that we're looking to uh, implement and automatically generate those uh, XML files to be right first time after passing the validations. So that's a quick look at our API. And that's how we would define and get the data into our solution. And those of you who have done filings before are probably uh, may have interacted with Advisor Solution and the data would go into the portal as Mary has shown earlier, whereby you would do your XML file upload or um, in, in some cases do manual entry if it is still applicable uh, to your entity, if it's quite a small one. And then when that file goes through, the data is then submitted to the tax authority. They then have the access to it uh, obviously to transmit to all of the other uh, partner jurisdictions which they have an agreement with. Uh, and really what we're going to look at next is how that data can then be used to inform decisions, compare entities, and really see how the tax authorities will use that data uh, after it's passed through the advisor solution. So that's going to be next up. But if anybody has any questions or anything like that, please feel free to put them in the chat uh, and I'll uh, get the TPA global uh, moderators to let me know if there's any of those. But moving on, we're going to just quickly look at some of the operational reports that are currently uh, looked at to date in the um, Visor AUI solution. So these are just the standard reports and the starting point for when we go into any of the tax authorities uh, and provide uh, analysis to them. These obviously change from jurisdiction to jurisdiction based on their own requirements. But we feel that this is a, a strong foundation in order to start giving uh, them free access and be able to make informed decisions or be able to get oversight on particular entities or uh, particular patterns uh, and filings within the solution today. So we're in looking at initially, obviously, our CRS filings tracking. This can be applied to any of those collections that Mary uh, outlined earlier. And we can see here uh, I filtered down to a specific reporting period, so 2016. And I'd like to point out that this is all just test data. So uh, all of the data in here has just been um, used for advisors testing purposes. None of this is actual live data. But I filtered down to 2016. I could see the CRS manual filings or the XML filings. Again, I can select and change which ones I want to look at. And the reporting entities. Uh, that these filings pertain to. So which reporting entities have reported in 2016 for CRS, more than likely it would have been FACA at that point in time. And we can see the statuses associated with all of those filings. So we haven't gone back into our test solution and uh, exported some of these filings for transmission, uh, but you get to see exactly how many of those entities, uh, even as a percentage, have yet to be exported for transmission and packaged up and sent uh, via the CTS to your partner jurisdictions. And really what this is just showing you is that they have the ability to go in and look at your behavior as well, which users have actually went in and submitted the filings, what time they've submitted at, what revisions, how many iterations they've gone through, and what reporting entities they've uh, done this on behalf of, as well as the receiving country of that filing. So it's really that just whole uh, behavior around the filings and how uh, the users have interacted with the solution. Next, we're yeah, just sure. going to take a oh, yep. Yeah, Jordan, uh, I think this is a, a, gr a great example how on the back end uh, with these uh, also visual tools, uh, Jordan is showing us uh, how tax authorities can do all sorts of tricks of the books to uh, identify outliers as we from a corporate perspective would call them. Or um, as, as Jordan uh, pointed out when we prepared this uh, session, the validation points at the level of the tax authorities. That's just a different in terminology, but I think we're talking about the same, Jordan, or not? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, uh, obviously, I don't know if there's any questions coming in, but I'm sure you'll let me know. Um, 
So no, there were no questions so far. There was one question on how uh, a tool like TPG picks up uh, uh, data. I know uh, Maria has already left stage. So uh, on TPG, uh, you need uh, again a connector or an API to uh, to get that uh, uh, dirty data uh, fed into the uh, spreadsheet env environment. So the Excel spreadsheet environment, which TPG runs on. Um, I, I think that question would be uh, similarly relevant for, for um, if I'm correct, uh, Jordan, for the connect connectivity you guys are offering even on the front end of the of the digital mailbox, correct? Correct. Yes, it would be API uh, based. Yeah. And that, that would basically mean you have two ways of approaching it still from a corporate only perspective. So you, you do your whole thing and you, you comply with the XML uh, standards of the country you have to file. Uh, you can also say, OK, we, we take technology from uh, behind the digital mailbox and we, we use a party like, um, like Visor who already has also functionality in front of the mailbox. That that means you you get a double edge sort on on the the data outlier analysis on one side, and and the, the same uh, would be called uh, data validation uh, for for uh, acknowledgement that you did the right filing on the on the back end of the digital mailbox. Yep, absolutely. So yeah. Um, oh, go on. Yeah, and this fits into the, uh, the 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 Singapore example I was given before. So everyone's when I explain it says, well, either they work with it and they know it. Uh, Brazilian system uh, has similar features, even more advanced on on a wider scale of uh, a wider means of of taxation. Uh, a lot of people think this is uh, this is sort of future, but in in in, in our belief. The data to data communication through APIs and connectors between taxpayers and um, uh, tax uh, tax authorities is is, uh, is relatively close by in the not too far distant future. And some of these applications are already in place today. Um, what what we find in and and, and maybe Mary and Jordan can uh, share. A few lines on that. What we find is tax authorities are not always clear on what data they want. So they have different forms for different parts of the government who not necessarily talk to each other. So the double filing of the same data set is also a, a, a win if we can come up with a model where we only need to share our data once, or even better, the bank already shares that data with the tax authorities. So the corporate really needs to uh, can focus on, on its own corporate role. Any thoughts on that, uh, Mary and Jordan, on how tax authorities can get their act together by uh, creating a, an open space? I don't know, Mary, if you want to go first or? Yeah, okay, thanks, Jordan. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely something that, you know, we're seeing a lot more move towards. I mean, obviously, you know, the starting point for it is the data source and having like a data warehouse or having all of the requisite data available and then it's the tax authority's responsibility to pull the requisite data rather than the burden always being on the corporate and trying to get it right and then going back and forth. I suppose it, a lot of it comes back to uh, one of our original speaking points which was the data specialists. And we're seeing governments, I mean, they're getting in external teams. And as mentioned, they're also trying to grow some of their own in-house specialism. But that's so far and what we have seen is relatively slow. I mean, I think Singapore is by far and above ahead in this. I mean, that is very clear. And there are definitely movements in that direction, but it's slower in other parts of the world from what we've seen. Jordan, okay. what do you think? 
It's it's definitely a trend throughout uh, the registry space as well as AUI space, whereby the open banking APIs as as they've been made available and the more use of data that's been coming out of those, that that kind of standardized model across the board uh, would be applied to other industries would make sense. Uh, and then we would have the ability to use uh, that data as we see fit to fulfill any of the reporting obligations, whether it be for AUI or even local tax filings. So uh, it's definitely a trend to use this data and have a more granular data approach rather than these defined models who uh, may, sp may answer some questions and may uh, fulfill one use case, but that uh, may not uh, give you the outlier analysis or the additional contextual information for an entity or a financial institution that may be required for another question you might want to ask of that data. Very good. Um, given the, the time, uh, I haven't seen any other questions coming in. Uh, yeah, a final word, what uh, what Pfizer is busy with is obviously uh, banking, uh, financial institutions. And uh, as we all know, uh, banks, because of the, the obligations imposed to them by the regulators, already file their country-by-country -country reporting on their website. And so take a look at Barclays' website and try to find uh, the, the country-by-country country reporting. You will find uh, exactly what, uh, what what Jordan just has been showcasing. So that that regulatory that uh, the tech, the, the reg regulatory technology is already a, a enhanced uh, for a number of years, uh, easily to be transported to to tax authorities who over time might say not only the regulated companies like banks and insurance companies need to file their cbcr on the on their website but let's do all the corporates and uh, there's constant pressure at least by politicians uh, not sure where the oecd stands on uh, on this uh, right now but constant pressure to uh, to share data and share data with uh, a, a wide variety of stakeholders so with that, uh, uh, thanks very much, uh, Jordan and uh, Mary, for uh, for your uh, presentation and uh, the joint presentation with us. Uh, I think this was an interesting session all along. Um, please feel free to also uh, continue to register for upcoming events. There will be more Lego uh, for tax or building blocks for tax, as we call it, um, uh, sessions coming up with uh, more interesting parties like uh, Pfizer. Um, Thank you very much. Uh, like to see you back in the next event and uh, have a good day.